2021 edition 50k AMD gaming PC build. This video is going to be super fun. Let's get started. Hey guys, this is Vimal here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video was like highly demanded by you guys because last week I unboxed and showed you AMD's newest Ryzen 5000 G series APU, right? And you people were like, please Vimal build a brand new 2021 edition AMD budget gaming PC under 50,000 rupees. And that is what I'll be doing exactly today with this brand new Ryzen 5600 G APU. So guys, today's build is gonna be like super awesome. I'm sure you're gonna love it. And on top of that, this is a no GPU build. We won't be using any dedicated GPU that is because first thing is we want to test the internal graphic performance of this APU and second thing is under 50,000 you cannot afford a GPU paired with this uh, CPU guys so it's like highly impossible that is the reason there's no GPU in this build and one more thing guys this will be like a future upgradable build that means right now you're able to play like decent 720p and 900p and also 1080p gaming is also possible I'll show you all the benchmarks in this video and in future when you can add like a powerful GPU like maybe a 1660 super or maybe maybe a 20 series also now this PC will be like a monster gaming PC and also guys make sure not to miss any part of this video because I'll be covering a lot of important things I'll be showing you the complete assembling part and then I'll also show you some special BIOS custom settings and tweaks using which you can greatly improve your gaming performance of this build. And let me tell you, don't miss this part because without these BIOS settings, you won't get similar results like how I am getting in this video. So that is very important. And lastly, I'll also show you all the gameplay benchmarks and performance of this build. So without wasting any more time, first let me tell you the components that we'll be using for this today's PC, guys. First thing is, I've told you, right, the CPU we'll be using is AMD's newest Ryzen 50. 600G APU. I've actually covered all the information about this CPU in my last video. I'll leave a link for that in the card above. And going on guys, for this particular CPU, you'll need a motherboard, right? And these brand new Ryzen 5000 G series APUs are compatible with AMD's 400 and 500 series motherboards. And one thing I have to mention over here is, see, no matter which motherboard you're buying, you'll have to do a BIOS upgrade on that. And without that, your PC won't boot. So for example, if you're buying a maybe a 450 or a B550, motherboard now ask the seller or the vendor to update the bios on that motherboard and then only ship it to you otherwise your pc won't boot keep that in mind so for this particular build since we are doing like under 50,000 build now a b450 will be like more than enough you can get something like asus prime series b450 motherboard or maybe gigabytes ds3 hb450 motherboard that will be like plenty but i am using b550 from asus their strix edition b550 and the reason for that is i don't have a b450 right now but let me tell you one good thing is since you're getting a brand new 5000 series cpu a new 550 series motherboard it will be like future proof for you you don't need to change these parts for a long run so if you are getting a b550 that is well and good now if you ask about the ram i am using 2 8 gb ram sticks from hyperx so a total of 16 gb clocked at 2666 megahertz actually i would advise you to get maybe like a 3000 megahertz or about that only to get like great gaming performance but since we are a bit tight on a budget now you'll have to adjust with this only you're using the fury from hyperx which is like the most affordable ram in the market today and if you talk about the power supply for today's build actually a 450 or power supply is also like more than enough but since we are planning for the future right like maybe you'll be adding a future gpu like maybe 1650 or 1660 series for that now we are using a 550 watt power supply if you're planning on getting like maybe a 20 or 30 series a 650 watt is minimum that you would require i'm using corsair cv 550 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply and lastly if you talk about the case well for this build if you're tight on a budget just get any case of around 2500 or 3000 rupees but if you want a little bit of rgb and that premium then you can actually go with this case that I'm using for today's video. This is called as the ICE 511 Max from Anti Sports, and you know it costs only around like thousand rupees more than the budget cases. And for the thousand rupees extra, you're getting like four pre-installed RGB fans inside the case, and you're having like a neat PSU shroud also, and it's quite spacious. So you'll be like very happy with the end result of that. And if you talk about the storage part, I'll leave this up to you. Depending on your requirement, you can get the storage. A 240 GB SSD would be like sufficient for this build. So that is it guys, these are all the components we'll be using for today's build. Now let's get started. 
So guys, as I always say, building a PC is super fun and also very easy at the same time. Just follow my video step by step and you'll get the complete info on the assembling part. The first step we'll need to do is install the CPU on the motherboard. The B550 comes with an AM4 socket and before installing, make sure to check for the engraved triangle on the socket and align it with the gold triangle on the CPU. Now just pull down the lever to lock the CPU in its place. And that's it guys, we're done with the CPU installation. Next, we need to install the cooler. Now we're not using any dedicated air or liquid cooler, going with just the stock cooler that we got with the CPU because we're a bit limited on the budget, right? But the good part is that makes the installation damn simple. You don't even need to apply thermal paste separately as it comes with a pre-applied layer of thermal paste on the heatsink. Just place the cooler on top of the CPU and align it with the holes on the motherboard's back plate and simply tighten up all the four screws on all the corners, just like this. And to finish it up, don't forget to connect the cooler's 4-pin fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now is the time to install the RAM sticks. We're using two 8GB RAM sticks from HyperX and you'll need to install them in the primary RAM slots marked with a star on the board. Open up the slot and push them gently until the lever locks itself. We're almost 50% done with the build. Looks very simple, right? The only few things left to do are fixing the motherboard in the case and installing the power supply and the storage. The i5-11 Max case from Antisports is quite a spacious case and has a power supply shroud also. So we'll be able to do a neat cable management job and comes with four pre-installed RGB fans that only require one SATA cable to be connected for all of them. So you don't need to worry about the wiring also, especially useful for beginners. Place the MOBO in the case and start fixing the screws which you get with the cabinet. Go in a zigzag manner and don't over tighten them. Okay, we're almost coming to an end. Now time to install the power supply and the storage. Just like this. So guys, what I'll do is I'll quickly connect all the cables, install the storage and be right back to continue the video. Ta-ta! -ta, our PC is all assembled and good to go. The whole build hardly took around like 20 to 25 minutes, that too because I was like neatly organizing the cables. Otherwise, I could have done it within 15 minutes. I mean, just look at the PC guys, looks beautiful, right? With neat cable management. The only cables I need to connect were the 24 pin motherboard power cable, 8 pin power cable for the CPU and the front panel IO and audio cables. And oh yes, I forgot, I fixed the SSD over here and connected a SATA data and power cable to it. That's it. Now all that is left is to power on this baby and see how this thing looks like. Here we go. Boy, what a beautiful looking build. Be honest, does it actually look like a budget build to you? No, right? It definitely looks like a mid-range gaming PC with all that RGB going on. All thanks to the case from Antisports, it brought life to this build. The RGB lighting on it is easily customizable on the go using a dedicated LED effect button on the case itself, no need to install any sort of software also. And having a look at the interiors, you've got a minimalistic black theme going on. Just have a look at these beautiful shots and I hope you enjoy the video. And this is a setup we'll be using for today. As usual, a 1080p IPS monitor from LG and the peripherals are from Red Gear. Links for them will be in the description box below. Now before we actually get started with the performance benchmarks, I'll show you a couple of BIOS settings and tweaks that will greatly boost your PC's gaming performance. Now the BIOS UI may be a bit different depending on the motherboard brand you have, but the end result will be the same. The first thing you'll need to do is set the recommended XMP profiles for your RAM because by default they do not run at their advertised max speeds. In the ASUS BIOS it goes by the name DOCP and in the other brands it might be directly mentioned as XMP profiles. Just enable that from the home screen over here in the overclock tuner. After that head over to this advanced tab and click on this NB configuration. 
Now we'll be adjusting the UMA frame buffer size. You need to change it from auto to 2GB. This will greatly improve your gaming performance. You can even set it to higher like maybe 4 or 8, but 2GB is recommended as it is more stable and actually more than enough. Basically what we are doing here is, we are allotting a part of our physical RAM to the integrated graphics on the CPU. So setting it higher will actually limit your overall usable RAM for the other applications in Windows, so keep that in mind. Now hit the save button and finally exit from BIOS. Now let's get started with our actual benchmarks. Let's see how this Ryzen 5600G build performs. We'll be playing our all-time favorite game GTA 5 first and check out the results. The first test will be in 720p resolution with all the graphics set to normal mode and you guys can actually keep a track on the CPU stats at the top left corner. Gotta be shit. Holy smokes, you guys seen that? We were easily getting an average of around 95 to 100 frames per second. Now that is what I'm talking about, buttery smooth gameplay. Initially, I was a bit skeptical because despite being new Gen 5000 series APU, 5600G comes with only Radeon Vega 7 graphics while the previous Gen Ryzen 5 3400G had Vega 11 on board. But that doesn't make it a slouch because it's got huge upgrades in the other segments. The previous Gen 3400G had only 4 core 8 threads but this new one 5600G has 6 cores 12 threads with a turbo clock of up to 4.4 GHz. And not to forget it's based on the new 7 nanometer. Zen 3 architecture with 16 MB L3 cache. So you can expect very good compute and multitasking performance as well. And because of all these factors, the 5600G does offer slightly better gaming performance than the previous Vega 11 on 3400G. See, 5600G is mainly made for people who want to build a good all-rounder PC for home, work purpose and casual gaming needs under 50,000 rupees. This PC is powerful enough to easily handle most of the apps like Photoshop, Premiere Pro and you can even do all your 1080p and 4K video editing as well. But huh, don't expect that it can handle graphic intensive tasks. At the moment, it cannot because there is no dedicated GPU, right? But once you save up some money, get something like a 1650 or maybe a 1660 Super and and bam, you'll have a beast in your hands. So as the benchmarks show, we are getting a solid 720p gaming performance at stock settings. I haven't even overclocked anything. Same is the case with 900p resolution also. Now let's quickly also check out the performance at 1080p resolution. Great results. On an average, we were getting around 55 to 60 FPS at 1080p resolution also. Now what more can you ask for in 2021 at this price point that too without a dedicated GPU? Budget gamers will be very happy with this setup. And the best part is, it's also upgradable. Simply add in a 20 series or a 30 series GPU to this build in future and that will transform this into a monster gaming PC. So it's future proof also. Let's play one more game which is Doom Eternal. We're playing this game also at 1080p high graphics, so let's see how it goes. Hey, not bad, right? In high graphics, we were getting around 35 to 40 FPS on an average. And when you set it to low graphics, we were getting around 55 to 60 FPS on an average, which is quite sufficient to enjoy a smooth gaming experience. 
Now have a look at the temperatures also. The CPU temperature was fluctuating around 65 to 68 degrees centigrade, which is slightly a bit on the higher side only. Again, that is because we are using a basic stock cooler, right? We didn't buy any dedicated air or liquid cooler also. In future, you can upgrade it with a better cooling solution and you'll definitely see big improvement in the thermals as well. Well, that is it for today, guys. Time to wrap it up. Let me quickly summarize the component prices for you. The Ryzen 5 5600G APU costs around 26,199 rupees. A B450 budget motherboard like maybe Asus Prime series will be available for 6,600. 16GB DDR4 HyperX RAM kit costs around 6,000 rupees. Corsair CV 550W 80 Plus Bronze costs around 3,800. The ICE 511 Max PC case from Ant is priced at 4600 rupees, but if you're actually tight on a budget, you can go for maybe simple case of around 3000 rupees. And lastly, get any brand 240GB SSD and that will cost you around 3000 rupees. So the total price of this build comes down to 48,599 rupees. And this, my friends, was the 2021 edition 50K no GPU gaming PC build. Let me know if you want to see a part 2 of this video where I'll add a GPU to this build and show you how much performance difference you'll get in terms of gaming. And I'll definitely do that. So that is it for today. I hope you all enjoyed and found this video useful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos. And I'll see you all in my next one.